We have an HOA crisis brewing of epic proportions down here in Florida and all across America, with the HOA fees for homeowners and condo owners skyrocketing to as much as 2000 a month in some of these buildings behind me. And it's these skyrocketing HOA fees which are now causing many homeowners to be forced to sell their house or their condo in a desperate situation because they could no longer afford the payments. This is something that has the potential to cause a massive housing collapse in different parts of America, as well as potentially completely reshape how Americans buy their homes. Because I actually polled you guys on my YouTube channel and I asked you a question. Would you ever buy a house in an HOA or a homeowners association? And a massive 75% of you said no. Over 15,000 of you voted in that poll and the results were conclusive. You guys hate HOAs, which makes me believe we're going to continue to see this HOA crisis get worse because these people, they're going to sell their condo here in Florida, still at a very high price, at a point in time where no one wants to buy. And in this zip code, everyone, the number of homes for sale, you can see it's skyrocketed over the last two years here in Clearwater. And the problem that Florida is having in particular is that these uh, homeowners associations that run these condos, they didn't collect the fees that they should have for the last couple decades, particularly in these tall condo buildings over there. In many cases, they left the reserves under or unfunded. And so what that means is that, you know, a condo building has to do general maintenance and repairs, right? In many cases, these buildings didn't collect what they should have for those repairs and that maintenance over the last 20 or 30 years, but now they have to. Because the state of Florida signed into law a couple years ago, a new bill that said all Florida condos by 2025 have to be fully caught up on their reserves for their maintenance and their repairs. And this all has to do with that building collapse that occurred in Miami a couple years ago. The Florida government and Ron DeSantis, the governor, they want to make sure that doesn't happen in other condo associations. So they're now making all the condo buildings be caught up on their reserves and their maintenance, which means that if you're a current condo owner, you're going to get a bill potentially for the last 20 years of maintenance costs for the last 20 years of reserves, you're going to get that bill today, which is why there's all these stories of certain condo owners in Florida go, uh, seeing their HOA go from 500 a month to 2000 a month. I mean, it's crazy how much the costs are going up. And that's one of the main reasons why you're seeing the inventory in Florida's housing market skyrocket right now. And folks, it's about that time that I put on the sunglasses, but I got to tell you, it is bright and it is hot here in Clearwater Beach, Florida today. I think the temperature check is around, I mean, they say it's 91, but boy, it feels hotter than 91. But I actually want to take a second and just zoom out and just talk about this HOA crisis more nationally, right? Because it's not only in Florida where we're seeing issues, everyone. We're also seeing issues in a lot of other states. Because these HOAs have become so popular in America over the last three or four decades that now we have almost 30 million housing units in an HOA. I want you guys to think about that for a second. That's about 25, 20 to 25% of all housing units are in HOAs in America. And in some states, it's even higher than that. So in Florida, 45% of people live in an HOA. In Colorado, 40% of people live in an HOA. In California, 35% of people live in an HOA. Now, a lot of those HOAs uh, will be in condo buildings, but a lot of them are also for regular houses, everyone. And this is where the HOA thing gets a, little, gets a little tricky because often you'll see like a house on Zillow that's like in a normal neighborhood. And then you'll see like HOA payment, $100 a month. And you say to yourself, why is this house in an HOA? And the way this happens, everyone, very important you understand this, is that the home builders typically build in HOAs. Today, 66% of all new build homes are in an HOA and it's over 80% if a big builder does it in a big development, 80% in an HOA from these big builders. And they do that for a couple of reasons. One, they think the HOA is gonna help the sale value of the houses, which clearly is something that might change soon. They also do that because um, the, the town and the city like it, because the HOA will often manage the roads and other aspects of the development, uh, so the city doesn't have to do it. And so it's these builders actually that are responsible over the last 40 or 50 years for the propagation of HOAs. And the issue with them is not just the cost, right? $100 a month, you know, maybe to live in this neighborhood in an HOA in a house isn't a huge deal. It's more the loss of freedom and sovereignty 
if you buy a house in an HOA. Very important that you guys understand these risks because more and more we're seeing horror stories across America of people who buy a house in an HOA. Again, payment isn't even that much, 100 a month, but then they get hit with all these crazy fees from the HOA. So the people running the homeowners association will be like, you can't have a car parked in front of the house. You need to trim those bushes. You need to trim that tree. You can't have a garden in your front lawn. There'll be all these rules and bylaws, and if you violate them, you'll get a fine. And in some cases, if you don't pay the fine, or if you don't even know you have the fine, the HOA can foreclose and kick you out of the house. There's these stories of HOAs kicking people out of their houses and selling them on the court steps for pennies on the dollar. And so if you are someone looking at buying into an HOA, you gotta understand the bylaws. You gotta understand how rigorous and strict the HOA is with enforcing them and if those laws will interfere with uh, your freedom. Just think about it, everyone. Like, you buy a piece of land, right? You buy a piece of property. Well, what's one of the main reasons why you wanna own land and property? It's freedom and security, right? It's freedom. And to actually buy property in an HOA where they can tell you what you can and can't do, that's a loss of freedom and a loss of security. And so you know what, I wonder everyone, like could the shift we're seeing right now in the perception of HOAs in America cause a massive downturn for any property that's in an HOA? I mean, it really seems like people hate them right now and potentially for good reason. A lot of these HOA managers went above and beyond and really turned into kind of micromanagers and dictators and went from being someone who kind of enforced basic rules to really going nuts, right? And that's causing huge, huge issues to go along with the crazy, crazy condo assessments now in the buildings here in Florida for condos. And so I just wonder, are we gonna see a reduction in demand from a structural standpoint for houses in HOAs? And is that gonna cause big problems for home builders, everyone? This is what they do, DR Horton, Toll Brothers, um, Lennar, they build into an HOA. That's their business model. And one of the reasons they did that, everyone, is because there was a study from George Mason University. It found a house, a comparable house in an HOA would sell for 6% more than a house, similar house not in an HOA. And the idea behind that is that the HOA kind of makes sure that the community looks nice, right? This is, you know, one of the upsides of an HOA is that there's rules and regulations about what you can and can't do. And so there's less riffraff, right? Like if this is an HOA, you're not gonna see like a boat parked in the front lawn. You're not gonna see someone paint their house pink. You're not gonna see someone throw crazy parties or do an unregulated Airbnb in an HOA because there's rules kind of enforcing those things, uh, restricting those things. And you know, folks, this is an interesting kind of housing market here that I'm walking in right now here in Clearwater. For those of you that don't know, Clearwater is in Pinellas County, Florida kind of west of Tampa, uh, northeast, northwest of St. Petersburg. Clearwater is a big beach destination, kind of an older population that lives here, but also a lot of tourists. You can see some of these houses behind me look very nice, everyone. This is a very well-maintained, well-manicured community. I actually like it a lot. I think I looked on Zillow. Some of these houses are worth in the millions of dollars, in the millions. And there's a big debate if the fundamental value of these houses is actually in the millions of dollars because you can see there was just crazy appreciation that occurred since the pandemic. The values went up 40, 50, 60, 70% in some of these zip codes from 2019 to 2024. And so when you guys go to look at a house in Florida or many other parts of America today, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying these prices are still insane. A lot of home buyers now are kind of saying to themselves, I don't want any part of this, this housing market. Even though inventory is spiking, even though the number of price cuts here in Clearwater is at the highest level in seven or eight years and the sellers are becoming a lot more motivated, the buyers are saying, I don't care. And this is leading to some very concerning statistics on home buyer demand right now, everyone. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to this. I haven't mentioned this statistic in a while, but the mortgage applications to buy a house, this is one of the most fundamental leading indicators of home buyer demand in America and it's tanking. The mortgage application index reported by the Mortgage Bankers Association folks is now down to an index level of 132. That's down 13% from last year, which was already a very low level. And now we're down 50% from pre-pandemic norms 
on the amount of people applying for a mortgage to buy a house. I want you to let that sink in. We're down 50% on mortgage applications from 2019 levels. The buyer demand, it's literally in the gutter. Everyone and it's showing no signs of improving. It's just continuing to get worse, suggesting that we are going to see an extended period here of buyers being out of the market and that the Fed cutting interest rates once or twice by the end of the year is not going to make a huge bit of difference. And I think this is the one thing a lot of people got to wrap their head around everyone. And I think a lot of people in the housing market are struggling with this because people have been reared and geared to think that when the Fed cuts rates, all the buyers are going to come back in. You guys can let me know if you've heard a realtor tell you that, if you've heard someone else in the housing market tell you like, oh, just wait for the rate cuts. And then people are going to come back into the market and then the prices are going to start surging again. But so far, folks, that does not seem like it's happening. Mortgage rates have gone from 7.5, 7.6 down to 6.8 in the last couple months. 80 basis point improvement. No increase in home buyer demand. In fact, the buyer demand's gone down. The buyer demand's going down while mortgage rates are going down. That's problematic, everyone, for the housing market. And what I think might happen, everyone, and what I kind of fear is going to happen for a lot of these sellers here, is that many of them are banking on a Fed rate cut being stimulative to the housing market and returning demand. I don't think it's going to happen. And I think when it doesn't happen, there's going to be a freak out. I think a lot of sellers are going to freak out and they're going to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We thought that some rate cuts were going to bring the buyers back, but it's not. So what do we do? What do we wait for at that point? I think at, at that point, you'll see a lot of the sellers get a little bit more realistic on their price, especially here in Florida, especially in any zip code where the inventory has spiked. Because that's kind of the most important metric for you to look at right now, folks, the inventory levels in your zip code. That's going to tell you the likelihood of whether prices are going to go up or down in the next year. Here in Clearwater Beach, the number of listings is now back to pre-pandemic levels. And many other parts of Florida where, where I am right now, the inventory has gone up so much that we're at the highest level in the decade. And so with those sky-high inventory levels and sky-high price cut rates, those are signals that the market has heavily shifted down. And what I would encourage you guys to do, if you want to know what the data is saying about where your neighborhood is heading on prices and where the values of these homes could go in your area, Check out the home price forecast score for your area on Reventure app, www.reventure.app. Sign up for a premium plan, which will give you access to the home price forecast score for every zip code in America. It's a score ranked from zero to 100. And if that score is heavily below 50, that's an indication that prices are more likely to drop. And you know, if you see heavily below 50, you see a lot of blue on the map as an indication of a downward pressure price market. That's an indication that as a buyer, you're probably better off waiting. Or if you're making offers today, you should make those offers below asking price and potentially significantly below asking price. You might get laughed out of the room for a little while, but if you keep making those offers below asking price in a market with a low score, you have a better chance of success compared to if you try to buy in a market with a higher score, like there's certain parts of America, you know, where the home price forecast score is above 60, above 65 out of 100 you're not gonna have any success making below asking price offers because those markets are still competitive, prices are still going up. But if your area is below a 50 and heavily below a 50, and you can see the trend continuing to head in that direction to a buyer's market, it's a signal prices are more likely to drop. There'll be more favorable conditions for you as a buyer in the future. And I just think it's so important for you guys as buyers and investors to arm yourself with the data right now on these trends. Because the housing market here is shifting fast. Obviously in Florida, the HOA crisis is a big part of that. You're gonna see the HOA crisis reflected in inventory and price cuts and the Reventure app home price forecast score, www.reventure.app. And sign up for a premium plan for $39 a month and research the home price forecast score in your area and other cities across your area.